Yo, in this video, I'm going to break down in more detail some of the questions that people have been asking me about the pathway to a man's heart. Based on my video, which was a live of what is the difference between love, lust, and infatuation. Now, if you watch this video to the end, you're gonna see a link to that video in the top or the right corner. So if you wanna see the entire video, go back and click, click on the link. But also there's a subscribe, subscribe button at the end of this video as well. Hit that subscribe button as well. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna tell y'all the pathway that she got to my heart. So. <laughs> That was not planned, but I'm not going <laughs> to edit it either. <laughs> so what is the pathway to a man's heart based on love, lust, and infatuation? Now, like I said, we're not going to go through each one of those things of love, lust, and infatuation and exactly what they look like. We're going to go through what I explained, but in a little bit more detail about the pathway to a man's heart where men work from the lower chakra up. And when I say men, I also mean anyone who is functioning from the masculine energy as their primary. This could also be a woman who functions from her masculine energy as a primary. So we're going to use the chakra system in order to explain this in better detail for you to, be able, for you to have a greater understanding and be able to fully utilize this information in your relationships. And, but before we get there, let me express this valuable point. It's a very valuable point. Just because you don't agree or just because you think how things should be does not mean that's how it is. Life is not fair. Life is what it is. If a person is working for masculine energy, this is just what it is. It's not for you to change. It's not for you to expect change. As a matter of fact, if you got someone who's working for masculine energy and they try to change it based on conditioning and culture and things like that, then all they're going to do is have a dual mind. They're going to be lukewarm. They're going to straddle that fence, as they say. They are not going to be their real self. And because people who work from masculine energy are not their real self, this is why they have so many problems in relationship. And this is why people have a lack of understanding when they function with someone who works from masculine energy. So, I'm going to say this and you just, I think it's Masamuto, but go look it up. I might be saying the name wrong, but he talked, he talked about, he has a quote and I'll try to find it and post it right here so you can see the exact quote, but basically it's, you can't see the world in how you think it should be. You got to see the world in how it is. And someone working from masculine energy, that's just how they are. And it's not for you to change. Now, here's the thing you can still get to their heart. You just gotta know how and accept the fact that that's just the process. It just is what it is. And if you don't like it, if you can't deal with it, if the person that doesn't have both their feminine and masculine energy in balance, then you just have to deal with it or move on. Find a person who has both their feminine and masculine energy balance or find someone who works from their feminine energy down and that may match up well for you. But if you're masculine energy and you try to find and you try to force somebody to be masculine energy, try to force somebody to be, you know, crown energy now, it's not going to work. So basically, it is what it is. And really, it's like anything else in the world, anything else in society It's there for you to work your way through it in the best way you possibly can. So for all and I'm going to use just the male, female, I'm not going to keep on trying to say masculine energy, feminine energy. I'm going to say men and women. All right, if you identify more with men, then you identify more with women. Who cares? All right, but for all you ladies out there, you're having problems. You're not understanding how the man works. You're trying to love a man the way that you expect to be loved because you're working from feminine energy, from spirit, you know, crown spirit energy, third eye vision, throat chakra to heart energy. You're working from crown down and he's working from, from root up and you're frustrated, you're trying to figure this out and it's just not working for you. And you think that he needs to be more evolved, as you would say, but he is already evolved. He's already who he is. He's already functioning in a way that works for him. Stop trying to change it. Stop trying to change it. It doesn't work that way. So let's break this down a little bit more. So I got my red mug with my tea. I'm drinking a tea that's called Vitality. 
all right? It's called vitality. It adds more vitality to your life. Go to mysticmama.com and you can order some vitality tea. But that's what I'm drinking. So, what are, let's talk about the chakras. Your root chakra. The root chakra is at the base of the spine. Many of you ladies think that men function from this sexual chakra first. But in truth, we first function from our root chakra. What is our root chakra? Our root chakra is blocked by fear. But it is our root, it is our foundation, it is the stabilizing energy in your life. It is the stabilizing effects around you, environment around you. Uh, if when you have security in your life, then in what, whatever aspect of life you're working that chakra in, then you feel confident to stand and stand firm and move forward in whatever endeavor it is. If, if, you're, if you're financially stable, then your root chakra as far as money is concerned, if you're not robbing Peter to pay Paul, if you're not spending more money, you got more income than outgo, then you have a strong root chakra of security in your financial area. But when it comes to relationship, what does that translate for the guy, for the male energy? That translates into loyalty. When a man knows that his woman is loyal, when a man knows that when she's at work, she's not having a work husband, when she's out with her girlfriend, she's not pushed to, to, she's not affected by the push to flirt with other men, to be um, in over conversations with other men, to, to give out their phone number, to flirt, you know, overly flirt with other men. When, when a man is secure that his woman has eyes for him, that she has words for him, that she has intimacy for him, that she has care, consideration for him. You see, one of the biggest mistakes a woman can make is to give more consideration to another man, to another woman, to their children, to the church, to the mosque, the synagogue, to a civic organization, to their work, to everything else. She's given more care, more consideration, more loyalty. She's willing to go to work when she's sick, but she won't take care of him when she's sick. She's willing to, to make sure that she go to, to whatever civic organization she's a part of and be a part of that when she's dead tired, but she don't want to spend time with him when she's dead tired. When those kinds of things are going on, you're breaking the foundation chakra, the root chakra is out of whack, and it's not functioning properly for the man, so he's, then he doesn't feel secure in the relationship. It is not a personal insecurity. He doesn't feel secure in your love for him. You can say it all day, all you want to. You can keep saying it, keep saying it, keep saying it. But your actions are dictating something else. And as long as your actions are dictating something else, it doesn't matter what you say. It doesn't matter that, well, you know, I was there for him when this, that, and the third, or I was there for him when this person passed on, or I was there for him, you know, when he went through this, or he went through that. That may be how you experience love, but it ain't got nothing to do with how he experienced love. Let me tell you, I was in a relationship. My happiness was fifth down the line. There were five other things that were more important than me. And even though the person claims that they love me, and they probably did, but the fact of the matter is, these things were loved more than I was because those things were always taken care of, but I was not. And oftentimes, people who don't understand how to get to a man's heart through first his foundation chakra will always put him on the back burner, will always think, He'll be okay. I'll get to him. Soon as I finish taking care of this, I'll get to him. But guess what? Eventually, you don't get to him. His frustration grows. His irritation grows. And after a while, his affinity for somebody else grows. Or his affinity to be by himself grows. And then he realizes that he can live without you. And the moment he realizes that he can live without you, he's gone. He's gone. Or like some men, they cheat on you. First reason a man cheats on a woman is not because he needs sexual con conquest. First reason a man cheats on a woman is because somewhere in that root chakra, 
he's not being fulfilled. He doesn't feel your loyalty. He doesn't feel your commitment to him. And so there's no foundation there and he leaves. Some men are just dogs. This is true. But for most, there's something in the foundation of chakra. Are they able to express it? Is a man able to express it all the time? No, because we're not talking about your throat chakra. So he may not be able to communicate that. But what he can communicate is that he just doesn't feel that you're there for him, that you actually truly love him. So that root chakra is shaky. It's shaky. So if you want to first establish the root to the man's heart, then show him that you're loyal. Show him that he is just as important as cleaning the house. He's just as important, if not more important, than the kids. He's more important than the, the church. He's more important than the job. He's more important. Your relationship with him is so important that what it takes to make him feel secure in the relationship, you're willing to do whatever it takes to make him feel secure in the relationship. If that is the acknowledgement of turning down advances from other dudes, if that is in the acknowledgement of making sure people know their boundaries within the relationship as to what they can, how they participate in the relationship, not having a freaking work husband or your, whatever y'all want to call your, your, your best friend from your school days who you still spend time with. I actually literally had a woman who told me that her male friends were her male friends and I would never meet her male friends. And I was like, and she still wants to go hang out with her male friends. You bat shit crazy if you think that that's going to happen. You can't be, if you want to be with a man who works from his masculine energy, that's not going to work. You're not going to provide that foundation for him. So if you want to provide that foundation for him, all these things that you keep private, these separations of life that you have, these ideas of still being beneficial to other people and putting them ahead of him, that's not going to work. So if you are in that situation and you want that dude, you better change it. So what's the second chakra? I want to go into, I want to go into three chakras because the heart chakra will open up. The heart chakra will open up and he'll be able to fall in love with you if you can take care of these first three. So that's the root chakra. The next one is, your, is the sacral chakra. This is where y'all think men go first. This is where y'all think we go first. But it's not. It's not. It's second. Now it's a, it's a quick transition from one to the other. Once a man feels like he has your loyalty, then of course he's looking for the intimacy. He's looking for the sacral. He's looking for the romance. He's looking for the pleasure. The sacral chakra is your pleasure chakra. It is not just sexual pleasure, but it is all types of pleasure. But sexual pleasure is very vital to this chakra's fulfillment. So, although... A, I know, and she's up there just coughing. So y'all excuse the coughing. But <laughs> when the sacral chakra is not being fulfilled, this is also an area where it leaks down into the foundational chakra. So it may look similar, but it's not. Now this chakra is blocked by shame. Now, most men don't feel too much shame about their sexual um, conquest, so to speak or their sex life, right? But hypocritically, a man will put a woman to shame about her sex life. If she has had an experiential sex life, he'll put her to shame very quickly, but he will be a hypocrite in that, in that, in that way. But that's more conditioning. That's how society has trained men to be. So, it, so don't take that part too hard but recognize that if he's an elevated man, he will not care about your sexual conquest. But what he does care about is you fulfilling him sexually, you also being pleasurable to his eyes, you also being pleasurable to activities. You see, I know of a man who, his woman doesn't ever wanna go anywhere or do anything. So she, although she may want, she may do everything he desires sexually, the fact that as he likes to go places, travel places, do things, participate in certain events, she never wants to go. She wants to stay at home. So she's not pleasurable to him. His sacral chakra is not being fully open because he is not stationary, homebody. He's out. He's going. He's experiencing life. 
and she doesn't want to experience life in the same way. So he doesn't have that intimacy of having pleasure together by exploring new places and new things and that sort of thing. So it's not always just in sex. Now, don't get me wrong. Sex is incredibly important. Whatever his sexual level is, you, you and he need to be close. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to be exactly the same, but you gotta be pretty damn close. You can't be in a situation, like I dated a woman about 10 years ago who kept saying that, oh, I gotta get used to holding your hand. Oh, I'm not used to somebody kissing on me. Oh, I'm not used to all this hugging. Oh, I'm not used to walking down the street, you know, arm in arm together. After a couple of weeks, that got on my nerves because she's stealing away my pleasure of catering, my pleasure of chivalry. All those pleasures are being stolen away because it's all this dang on whining about it. So after a couple of weeks, I was just like, this ain't gonna work. Sorry, can't stay. You just not the one. So it's more than just sex, but sex is very important. So if you have a, um, I had a young lady, she pretty much just lied to me, you know. She, she told me how she would be, how she is, what she enjoys, and all these kinds of things. But as it turned out, those things were not necessarily true. That's not how she was. That not, and, and like I said, actions always tell the truth. And her actions showed who she truly was, which, I don't have a problem with her actions showing who she truly is. It just didn't work with me. So my advice was to find somebody whose your actions will fulfill. There's somebody out there for you. You just have to match up with the right person. All this is about matching up. Don't tell me that you like to go and experience new things but then when I suggest that we go here or we go there or we experience this or we experience that, you're, you have an excuse, you have a reason, you have a rationale as to why not. And see, you're, that, then we're not going to have a, a pleasurable time being together. And then for me, I'm not going to want to be intimate with you. After a while of that, I don't want to kiss you anymore. I don't want to hug you anymore. I don't want to make love to you anymore. I don't want to do those other things because all the 360 degrees of pleasure is not being fulfilled. And so since it's not, we, we, we can't deal. So if you want to get to the next level to get to a man's heart, you have to understand all his different types and levels of pleasure and be able to fulfill them at least 80%. Not 79, 80. Not 79.9, 80. 80%. If you can't do it, move on. Move on. Stop wasting your time. Stop wasting his time. So the next chakra. This is your power chakra. The power chakra is usually blocked by guilt. <clears throat> right? Now most men will feel guilty about mistakes that they've made. And if they've got balance, then they recognize that those mistakes were just opportunities to learn. So they've gotten over their fears. They've forgiven themselves for their for, for other things they've done. Um, they're not ashamed anymore, but now they've forgiven themselves and realized that mistakes are just part of life and you grow from mistakes. But for a relationship situation, the way to a man's heart when you get to the power chakra, so you, you, you're shown that you're loyal. You show that you're loyal. Then you show that you can take care of all his pleasures and sexual needs. But then I've seen women who say, I'm loyal. I'm loyal to a fault, as a matter of fact. I take care of all his sexual needs. I don't understand why he still has not opened his heart to me or he has still decided not to be with me. And as I dig deeper into the situation, what I find out is that in the power chakra, the power chakra, which for a man in a relationship, someone working for masculine energy represents respect. And it's not always about respecting because he makes the money. 
It's not about being subservient to the man and him being under your foot. It's not like Ruth and Boaz when she came and submitted herself by kneeling at his feet or sleeping at his feet. It is not to that degree. You don't have to bow down and enslave yourself to the man. But respect. Men, men or anyone who works for masculine energy need to feel useful. They need to feel wanted and they need to feel respected. So first, respect it. Respect the position of being the masculine. Respect the ideas. Respect the way that they live. It's of course, two people coming together, they're going to have to mesh how they live, but everything is not how you want it to be. Everything in the house cannot be how you want it to be. Everything in the car cannot be how you want it to be. Every restaurant you go to can't be how you, where you want to go. Everything you do can't, everything y'all do can't be how you want to do it. Respect his opinions. Respect that he had a life before you. And he had ways before you. And as accommodating as he may or may not be, you have to respect how he lived his life. Also, respect his advice. Oftentimes, especially like I'm 47 years old, right? I wouldn't date somebody who's like 20, who hasn't experienced anything in life. Anybody I'm dating, like, you know, she's 41. I need you, I, I recognize that I have experience. I've done things, I've experienced things. If I give advice, I'm not giving it to hurt you. I'm not giving it to, to, to push you away. I'm not giving it to lord over you. I'm giving it so that you can have a better opportunity or you may not be seeing something. Respect his advice. Respect the experience of his life. Also, so we're going to respect that. A man needs to feel useful. He needs to feel useful. May and needed. Let me get you useful and needed all together. Useful and needed. Too often, where women who have done everything for themselves, once they are in a relationship, Continue to think that they're going to do everything for themselves. Whereas it makes the guy sits there like, well, she doesn't need me for nothing. So if she doesn't need me for nothing, I'm not useful to improving her life. Then why am I here? I have no purpose in this relationship other than sex and companionship. And yes, a dude who wants to open up his heart to a woman cannot just be sustained by sex and companionship. That's a guy who does not want to open up his heart to a woman. But if a man wants to, if his desire is to open his heart up to you, if his pathway is to open his heart up to you, but you are so damn independent, you are so chip on your shoulders, you are so I don't need a man, then he's not going to feel useful, he's not going to feel needed, so then his power chakra of respect will never spin. It will never open up to his heart chakra. I think it was, um, I can't remember who the lady who sang the song. Um, I know some of you guys, you're going to write it in the comment. Uh, and it'll probably pop in my head in a few seconds. Jill Scott. <laughs> but in one of her songs, she was saying that she can kill the spider. She can do all these things, but she still needs him. She knows that she's independent. She knows she can live her life, but she still needs him. If a man doesn't feel needed, if he doesn't feel wanted, if he doesn't feel useful in your relationship, his power chakra won't open. He won't feel respected in the relationship and therefore he won't remain. Or if he does remain, he will never, ever, ever open his heart to you. Now I'm going to take this one step further that I did not express in the other video. And that is the fact of the heart chakra itself. And this goes for both masculine and feminine energy. This is where they both meet. Three from the bottom up to the fourth of the heart. Three from the top down to the fourth of the heart. They both meet in the same place. They both have the same issue. The heart chakra, and when all these things are working, and you say that, well, I've done all those things, I've seen all those things, what's still not working? The last and final piece of the puzzle is the heart chakra itself. The heart chakra is blocked by lost love, by lost love, by either a crushing defeat of love somewhere in his life, the loss of love somehow, some way, 
something like that which has blocked him from being able to open his heart. Now, I'm going to tell you guys. I'll tell you something. I have had from women three devastating loss of love. The first one and the second one were two women who cheated on me, who I opened myself up completely to and they cheated on me and it devastated me at that time frame. Those first two, devastated, right? The third one was the loss of my grandmother. My grandma Izzy was the queen, the top shelf of womanhood in my life. I mean, don't get me wrong, respect all do. I love my mother, my mother is an amazing woman. Two and a half jobs, take care of the kids. She is very loving, caring, love my mother to life. But my grandmother, that was my heart and soul. When she transitioned, I had, and, and so I already had two people who had cheated on me and devastated my life, devastated my heart life, I should say, to the point where I was very much like, I don't think I could ever fall in love again. Then when I lost my grandmother, or she transitioned because you never lose, but when I, my grandmother transitioned, the amount of loss I felt at that time frame was so tremendous that this was not free to, this, 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 you couldn't get in here. You, this wasn't happening. Not until my daughter, Sydney, was born that this started opening up, but then you couldn't get in here. No one could penetrate this, that loss of love. That loss of love. And even, and, and, and the fact of the matter is, when I got divorced in 2008, a person that I had dated soon after that, they decided they wanted to cheat on me too. As a, it was a thing of opportunity. I'm not going to go into the names of why, but it was a celebrity opportunity and they decided that they was going to cheat on me. It made me mad, but it didn't hurt me because this wasn't open to be hurt. So I tell you my personal so that you can understand that if you do those things and get to a person's heart chakra and they still just not open it to you, they have lost love and now they don't trust love. They have not gotten past that pain to the point where they feel safe to open their heart again because in their mind, in their heart, in their spirit, you are going to break them again and they do not want to feel broken. So at this point, you have to understand if you haven't done the, if, if, if there's no love, no trust, no loyalty there, if there's no pleasure that's being satisfied there, if there's no respect and usefulness there, they are all, that, and, and they still have loss of love, they're not opening this heart for you. But if you give them those three and then make sure and work with them to open, to get past that love, to make them feel so secure that they said, you know, I'm willing to risk my heart again for you. I'm willing to risk falling in love because as the pendulum swing, as far to the right of love, it will swing to the, to the left of pain. So when they've experienced so much pain, they may stay right here in the middle. They don't want to swing too far. They know how much love they can handle because they know how much pain that it'll bring if it doesn't work. But if, they, if you've taken that time to develop the lower chakras, those physical chakras, because those work in the physical plane, then they can open up their heart. They can get past their lost love. They can get past those issues and then open themselves up to new love, open themselves up to the opportunity to swing far to the right and enjoy the bliss of true, amazing love. So... That's a more detailed, I hope, look, and here's the thing. I'm going to say this at the final part. Too often women ask men, how do they get to a man's heart? How do they have a man fall in love with them? How do they keep a man in love with them? They ask the question of a man. The man gives them the advice, tells them the hard truth, but then you don't follow through. You hear it, but you didn't listen. Or you listen, but you didn't hear it. But either way you want to say it, you don't follow through and you don't put in the work. No, instead, you may want to argue with me and say, that's, that's Neanderthal. That's, that's cave-like. 
that's so lower chakra, that's so, you know, that's just, that's rude or whatever negative thing you want to use, you want to cast it aside and expect the man to change and be more like you. Oh, be spiritual, be, be mental and all these kinds of things. Sorry, it don't work that way. It doesn't work that way. It is what it is. So as a man, I'm telling you, as a masculine energy man, I'm telling you, well, actually I'm more balanced, but <laughs> I'm telling you, when I used to be in that category of working from just male energy, from almost purely male energy, I mean, it took a long time for me to get balanced energy, but I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, take this advice, put it to work. Is every man going to respond properly? Probably not. But it's worth it when you get one that does because all you need is one to respond properly. All you need is one to open up his heart and the other chakras being open. And then he can elevate to the throat chakra, third eye chakra, crown chakra. So all it takes is one time, one person, and that's it. And then you are in a tantric relationship of bliss forever. But it just takes one but you might have to go through because people have experienced a lot. They've been burned a lot on both masculine and feminine side. They've been burned. Everyone is burnt toast that needs to be scraped. So don't get all caught up in thinking that it's supposed to be this perfect Cinderella, Hollywood, magical thing. This takes work. It takes work. So I appreciate you guys for being here. Continue to subscribe, watch one of the other videos, and we're gonna. This is going to carry over into our Tuesday night talk this week. It's December fifteenth. This today is going to carry into our Tuesday night talk about John Gray buying his wife a Lamborghini, and we're going to talk about leadership, financial responsibility, irresponsibility, and the sick offense that just go ahead and follow along too. So y'all have a great day. Remember, you got to free yourself to be yourself because your greatness. It's non-negotiable. And sign up for the Alchemy of uh, the tour, <laughs> Alchemy Tour of Life. <laughs> the, I can't even say it right. Y'all have a great day. Bye.